Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making some lavender oat foaming bath salts. I've made a lot of things over the years, but I honestly haven't made much in the way of bath salts, so this was a fun new challenge for me. I'm working with two new to me ingredients, dendritic salts and natrosorb bath powder. These two ingredients have two really unassuming inkies. For dendritic salts, it's just sodium chloride, which is the same inky as for table salt, and for natrosorb, the inky is just tapioca starch, so again, it would be the same inky that you would just have for plain tapioca starch, but they're both quite special. Both of these ingredients are really absorbent, so they help retain fragrance and reduce clumping. If you've ever made bath salts and sort of had them turn into a bath rock, uh, obviously that's not what we're looking for. And these two ingredients make that not happen. You don't necessarily need both of them. I had fun playing with both of them, but if you'd like to use just one or the other, please make sure you are reading the blog post linked in the description box below. The substitutions section at the bottom has information on how to use just one or the other. For scent, we have some gorgeous, relaxing lavender essential oil, and I've also included some soothing colloidal oatmeal for some skin goodness. There's quite a lot of Epsom salts in here, which help with sore muscles, which is great because now that it's finally getting warm again, I am going for runs, and I am finding I am very sore after those runs. The foaming part of these bath salts comes from the inclusion of some sodium lauryl sulfur acetate, which when you add the salts to a running bath, you get this really lovely layer of rich, dense lather floating on top. There's no heat required to make these. Much like making bath bombs, we'll be doing lots of working things together with our hands, and I do recommend a pair of gloves for that so you don't dye your hands purple with the dye that is in these bath salts. The finished bath salts are a lovely lovely treat for a bit of spruced up self-care. You have the aromatherapy of the relaxing lavender, bubbles are always way more fun than they probably should be, and a touch of dye blooms beautifully when the salts get added to the water, turning your bath water a lovely soft lavender color. As always, please make sure you are reading the blog post linked in the description box below for more information, including links to places to buy all the ingredients, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and a whole lot more. But come on, let's get started. We'll begin by combining seven and a half grams of dendritic salt, three grams of colloidal oatmeal, and 0.15 grams water-soluble dye, that's what the little kind of dark flecks in there are. Up next, you'll need six grams of natrosorb, and you can see that this is crazy light. You know, this is less weight than the salts, but uh, significantly more volume. And then in this bowl, we have one and a half grams of polysorbate 80 and 0.75 grams lavender essential oil. And we're going to work that together with our hands, kind of like you would maybe massage fat into a, like a biscuit dough or a scone, except we are going for significantly uh, more uniform than you would with a, with a biscuit. Our next ingredient is 116.235 grams Epsom salts. And our last ingredient here off to the side is 15 grams of sodium lauryl sulfur acetate, SLSA. So you're gonna incorporate that, but first you're going to want to put on a dust mask and make sure that you also, you know, had your dust mask on when you were weighing uh, this out because it's very, very, very unpleasant to uh, inhale. Once the mixture is uniform, that is pretty much it for the making, which is great. Our next step is going to be spreading this out on a cookie sheet so it can dry for a couple days. So with those spread out, I'm just going to leave them to dry for about three days before packaging them up. So for packaging, here's a different version of these salts that I made. Uh, and that has already uh, you know, had a chance to dry. So really the only difference between the bath salts that we just made and these ones that you're seeing now is that these ones had just a little bit more liquid in them, a bit more fragrance and a bit more polysorbate 80. And you can see that really caused the dye to bloom quite a lot more, but it's the same dye in the same amount, which is uh, quite cool. This cute little jar here is from Yellow Bee. It comes with a cork topper and then little wooden spoons that sort of nest in the side so you can dispense the product into your tub. And for a bit of a use demo, I'm just gonna add a spoonful of the salts we just made to the bath water. And you can see that 
they really do bloom and turn a lovely sort of soft lavendery color. I'm going to use this little mini mixer to sort of simulate the agitation we'd get if you added the salts to a running bath. You can see that we get a lovely layer of lather on top when there is you know, sufficient agitation when the salts are added to the bath water. And there we go. So we just made some lovely lavender oat foaming bath salts. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the partner blog post for this DIY as well. It is linked in the description box below this video. There you'll find more information on it, everything written out in both grams and percentages. You'll find information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, where to buy ingredients, and a whole lot more. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.